What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and these past few days have been a huge win for those who've been fighting the good fight for the soul of entertainment. From Kathleen Kennedy getting roasted by South Park to Spider-Man fans getting fed up with fake virtue signaling, there's a lot of disingenuous nonsense going on it seems. And while I was hopeful I could sit back and enjoy this win knowing that places like South Park are in our corner, it seems like the powers that be are actually speaking out of both sides of their mouths. So I'll talk about some South Park today, a little bit on Spider-Man, and some other things. We're entering a new meta, friends, and the battle is not over, so let's begin. Let's start with this article from Bounding Into Comics titled, Despite grinding businesses into the ground and destroying the fabric of societies, Paramount CEO Bob Backish declares we will be more successful with diversity, equity, and inclusion at the core of our business. Well, friends, this is not good, and let me tell you why. You see, Paramount CEO just openly stating that they're going to be embracing the same nonsense that's been ravaging places like Disney is not going to end well for them. It's also worrisome because Paramount is currently the company that has exclusive rights to properties like South Park which of course the Pandaverse has released under their platform and it's likely doing very well for them. So to have the company that finances and basically controls South Park to an extent, although probably less control than say their other franchises like Star Trek maybe, this backpedaling at a time of high victory is not only tone deaf, it's borderline insane. I could list you a multitude of examples where companies that have embraced DEI have all lost money, subscribers, and plummeted their analytics into the dirt. Places like Disney, of course, is the biggest of these misfires, as they are bleeding from pretty much everywhere since they've embraced this sort of thing. Even games like Spider-Man 2 are still being clowned on by fans for how much Insomniac pushes diversity in that game and it's led to some of the worst side missions players have experienced in modern gaming lately. Like playing Baby Activist Simulator when you'd rather be swinging around kicking bad guys in their stomachs. What I'm trying to say is that DEI is basically a company telling their customer base that things are about to become very disingenuous and very pandering very quickly. And again, it's very bizarre that the media giant that streams South Park is going down this route when it's so evidently a bad idea if you like making money. Paramount CEO Bob Backish confirmed this when he spoke during the 5th Annual Global Inclusion Week, which yes, is a real thing that apparently exists. He said, I, our senior leadership team, and our board believe that we will be more successful with DEI at the core of our business. We all come from different places, and understanding people's perspectives is actually what this week is all about. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is fundamental to our business. So, Paramount is feeling the pressure, it seems, and this has already infected their other properties outside of South Park. Stuff like Star Trek, for example, which they also own, has been pandering for years now, and it's led to arguably one of the worst strings of Star Trek-related content across the board, with fans being given woke slop to feast on if they want to enjoy their favorite science fiction series. And you know DEI isn't working for Paramount when the showrunner for Star Trek Lower Decks, whose name is Mike McMahon, has to beg fans to watch the show in order to ensure it doesn't get cancelled. Mike even said, Yeah, I mean, listen, we're in weird times. Everything is changing. I think everything's gonna continue to change. I would say nothing is safe. I don't have any bad news for anybody, but also, I think you shouldn't assume that this stuff is going to stick around unless you vocally and watch it early on. Well, you're right about one thing, Mike. We are definitely living in weird times, alright. But these are not the words of someone who's confident that what they're making is going to survive if they have to resort to this. When something is successful, like how Pandaverse was, the creators of South Park don't need to beg you in order for you to watch it. Because they know if what they make will resonate with viewers, then the support and performance of what they're making will speak for itself. It's never a good sign when a creator of something needs to beg their viewers to watch. But Lower Decks is full of DEI, and clearly it's not working for them. So for Paramount to be pivoting so heavily into the very same concepts that have ruined Disney and others, especially when they financed a special that directly makes fun of those actions and consequences, it's insane. It's like if someone filmed what happens when you throw something into lava and shows you how easily it can melt. Only for them to set the camera down and then they jump in the lava themselves. 
This action by Paramount doesn't make any sense, especially now of all times. According to Paramount's VP Head of Global Inclusion, which just sounds like a pointless made-up position in a company in order to pander, which it totally is by the way, but anyway, this VP whose name is Marva Smalls, says this whole thing was the United Kingdom's idea, apparently. This inclusion head of Paramount continues pushing which will absolutely destroy South Park's parent company by saying, and I quote, Inclusion Week actually began in the UK in 2018 in response to a call to action from the UK government for corporations to really spotlight the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. It ignited something in us to say, wow, what a great concept to create an immersive experience to amplify our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we took that seed of an idea from the UK and then in 2019 amplified it across our footprint. With heavy emphasis in the UK, the US, Los Angeles with a theme of being you. For us, the business for diversity is the business. It is not something we do in our spare time and pull off a shelf to check the box. So it is not about a transaction, but is really personalized, deeply seated and rooted in our business practices every day. When we say inclusion is paramount, we mean inclusion is paramount. So while we have this immersive experience once a year, not unlike other programs, it is just knitted and threaded together as part of the fabric. We don't have to say, oh, today is the diversity moment. Inclusion week is not unlike TED Talks that are curated to create this moment of immersion and retooling. Times of challenges and uncertainty where some communities may feel marginalized or disenfranchised are just a reminder that the core values of Paramount mean that we never take our foot off the gas and drive a culture that is very equitable, inclusive, and that creates a sense of belonging. What we also hope to be is a model for the industry and all like-minded partners in this space that we really can create the change we want to see." End quote. To hear the company that streams South Park sounding literally identical to what Disney has said in the past, it just fills me with a dread I hope I wouldn't feel again for a long time. Especially when Marva Smalls says diversity is not something we do in our spare time and pull off a shelf in order to check a box. When it is absolutely just that, this is starting to make me wonder if the concept of the Panderstone may actually be something that's lurking in the basement of Paramount's offices right now. Because everything Marva Small says here is just that, it's pandering in order to meet quotas. All of this nonsense from South Park's parent company is worrying, and it just mirrors what the now-fired Disney Studios VP Victoria Alonso said over two years ago. Remember Alonzo, the lady who would make sure everyone knew she was gay? And thought the name X-Men wasn't inclusive enough and it needed to be updated? Who got fired from Disney after their board of directors got fed up with losing money? And they threw her to the wolves for tanking their projects? Yeah, that Victoria Alonzo. So after what you heard Marva Small said over at Paramount, tell me how any of what Victoria says here is different. Victoria Alonso said during an interview at the Anarchy International Animation Film Festival in June 2021, and I quote, The reason we have that success consistently is because our audience is global. You cannot have a global audience and not somehow start to represent it. For us, it was really, really, really important to have that. For the longest of time, we heard a woman-led film will never open. I say, please check Captain Marvel made a lot of money. Then they always told us that Black Panther was never going to open and that nobody wanted a completely black cast and that made $1.3 billion. So you can look at it from the social point of view, the cultural point of view. But truthfully, this is a business. From a fiscal point of view, you are leaving money on the table by not representing. I think 51% of our audience is female, 28% of our audience is Hispanic. If we don't represent the people that watch what we make, eventually they'll go elsewhere because somebody else will figure it out. We could only tell stories if we succeed and actually have money to make them. So the idea of being if it makes money, why not make it, to me it seemed like a very simple equation, but it took a lot of time, a lot of talking, end quote. There's a lot to unpack there, but Captain Marvel made what it did because it was piggybacking off the hype of Infinity War and the post credit scene. Black Panther did what it did because it arguably had the greatest marketing push of all time. It basically said, if you don't watch this, you're racist, and well, the rest was history. But the sequel to Black Panther didn't make anywhere near what the original did. And the Marvels is gearing to stink up theaters and become the biggest Marvel flop of all time because it doesn't have something like Infinity War to springboard off of, and it shows. 
As for leaving money on the table by not representing, that's also not true. If it was true, then Blue Beetle should have made its budget back and then some, since such a large amount of viewers in America are Hispanic, but the movie flopped anyway. But why would a movie that looks and sounds Hispanic not make Hispanic people want to watch it? It's simple, because it's pandering. That's what these companies don't realize, Victoria Alonso and Marva Smalls are just another version of Kathleen Kennedy in the Panderverse. They unironically look at things and go, put a chick in it, make it gay and make it lame. And they don't mean it as a joke, they genuinely believe that. And circling back to the whole over one-fourth of general audiences are Hispanic thing, you don't make money by pandering. I guarantee you there's a Hispanic person watching this right now that loves Dragon Ball Z, and I don't blame them, because Dragon Ball is dope as hell. Now tell me why Hispanic viewers love Dragon Ball so much and they see themselves in it, and why Dragon Ball is actually interwoven into their cultural identity if the show is made by Japanese people and it's voiced by them too. In the eyes of Marva Smalls or Alonzo, Dragon Ball could only pander to Hispanic people if Goku was eating tacos while shaking some maracas. But instead it resonates very heavily with the Hispanic community or even the African American community too because Dragon Ball is just cool as hell. It's almost as if you don't need to pander in order to make your product worth consuming. You just gotta make dope shit and not talk down to people. Goku isn't black or Latin, but it doesn't matter because those giant groups of people love characters like Goku, Trunks, or Bulma because they're great. If Marva or Alonzo controlled Dragon Ball, they would unironically just come to the conclusion to screw it, put a chick in it, make it gay and lame, because that's all they know. So to see Paramount, the home of South Park, weirdly pandering when they don't have to, it just makes little sense to no sense to me at all. They say there's this untapped market where diversity can sell, but I would argue that same market is the same people who say companies must chase the modern audience. When I said before for over a year now that the modern audience is a myth, it doesn't exist. There isn't some mystical other group of paying customers out there that are fiendishly clamoring for diverse and inclusive content. There is no modern audience, there is just the same people who've been here all along the entire time. Me, you, you know, the actual audience. You don't win people over by pandering, you don't get into people's good graces by bending knees and begging them to watch your show or it'll get cancelled. Because stuff like Star Trek Lower Decks was likely made to chase that imaginary audience these weirdos are so convinced exists, when it doesn't. South Park doesn't chase that modern audience, because thankfully Matt and Trey understand that the only audience they need to chase is their actual fans. You know the same fans who were there when Cartman made a kid eat his parents in chili, or when the boys started a faith supergroup, or when they threw a ninja star into Butter's eye and had to cover him in dog fur and bring him to a veterinarian over an actual hospital so they wouldn't get in trouble. That audience that's been here all along, that's the audience these companies should be chasing. But the sobering reality they need to come to terms with is that instead of catering to you or me, they're rejecting us. And they end up making content for nobody in the end, and then they just throw their arms up and go, well, why isn't anyone watching? Because you're making content for nobody, you stupid asses. Maybe if you were more invested in making good content, that caters to the people who've been supporting your stuff for years. Instead of the made-up audience you're so convinced exist that all have unique made-up genders. And Black Lives Matter pins on their denim jackets and little rainbow flags that need to be updated every week because they keep inventing new identities you'd be making some real money, and you wouldn't have to beg. Inclusion week, by the way, at Paramount is stupid. It just reminds me of Morgan Freeman again when he told the world he hates the concept of Black History Month. These companies need to stop pandering at every single thing that they're convinced exists before they remove themselves so far from the actual paying customer that there's no turning back. Pandering hasn't helped anything like Marvel or Star Wars for years now. It's been ruining Star Trek, and games like Spider-Man 2 are being exposed daily for all the weird little nuggets of pandering that it does too. Like, did you know in Spider-Man 2, Miles Morales can do the Wakanda Forever emote? But Peter Parker can't because obviously he's a straight white guy, and therefore if he did it, it would be culturally insensitive apparently? Don't you love it when the media you consume never allows you to escape the nonsense of the real world for even a second? As As from Heels vs. Babyface would say, these corporations can't help themselves, but constantly remind you of the crap of today by constantly current-daying you. 
And remember how I said when you just cater your product to the actual real audience that exists, you end up getting rewarded? As of the making of this video, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie is out. Its budget is apparently around $20 million. Well, that movie has made $78 million on its opening weekend domestically. And when you combine international, the movie has made $130.6 million in its opening weekend. This makes it the third biggest opening for a horror movie ever just behind the two IT movies. And the best horror opening of the year, it even beat Scream 6. It's also the second largest opening for a video game adaptation with Super Mario in first place, of course. But you see what I've been saying? The people who made Five Nights at Freddy's the movie, which is Blumhouse and Universal, didn't make a movie for the critics because who cares what they think these days anyway, since it was leaked over a month ago already that they get paid in order to change their reviews. They made the movie for the fans, and look what happens when you listen to your fans. You make huge amounts of money. And a sequel is absolutely going to be happening, and you know what? Good for them. This shows Hollywood that when you make stuff for actual real fans, you end up getting rewarded. Wow, what a concept, right? And when you don't, you have to beg for people to support the things you make. So like I've been saying, this very bizarre turnaround for Paramount to be pandering like this, when they just release a special all about why pandering is moronic, is just confusing to me. If Paramount wants their streaming service and their IPs to flourish, they should just take pointers from South Park and just say to hell with DEI and making stuff for modern audiences. If they had the same mentality for Star Trek and other properties they own like South Park or Five Nights at Freddy's does, they would be swimming in mountains of money instead. So that's where Paramount is right now, dear viewer. They somehow decided to drink the Kool-Aid they dunked on, and I'm cautiously worried that this could lead to a future where South Park will end up having to parody the very corporation that houses them. And it worries me because if this sort of nonsense ends up poisoning South Park 2, at that point it could ruin the franchise's most powerful tool in its arsenal, which is their ability to personify the importance of free speech. I guess I'll keep my ear to the ground and try to monitor the situation for any seismic moronic activity. But until then, I just want to say thank you for watching, I appreciate it immensely, and thank you for all of your support. This channel is nothing without you guys watching, and all my success is due to the continued support of your viewership. So thank you, truly. Subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, use my G Fuel code if you wanna, and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.